touched your glasses at least one more time. Um, I would, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Nicola Sturgeon, our Deputy <coughs> First Minister, who's now going to say a few words about the document that we launched this evening. Nicola. Thank you very much, Leslie. And uh, as Health Secretary, I have to say this uh, notion of glasses being charged once too often is is not one I can approve of, <laughs> uh, certainly not when I've been given one full of orange juice. Uh, I am going to start with an apology. Um, I do that frequently actually. One of the last times I uh, said that I'm going to start with an apology, somebody in the audience heckled and said, politicians should always start with an apology. So hopefully I won't get that kind of bad behaviour from anybody here this evening. But the apology is for being late. I'm very sorry I got held up at another meeting. but. As they say, better late than never, and I'm delighted to be here. It's um, an event that I was uh, extremely keen uh, to support, not just because Epilepsy Scotland are based uh, in, in my constituency, of course, that didn't influence me <laughs> at all. Uh, I'm keen to be here to support the launch of this document because I know how much work has gone into it, and I know how important it is, and I think it's really important for me to... Uh, support it and to say a few words about it. We in Scotland, and uh, I think I speak, I'm pretty sure I speak for all of us, uh, have a shared objective. We want to live in a country, live in a society where everybody gets the chance to make a contribution uh, and to fulfil the potential that they have. Uh, as a government, uh, we, particularly in this climate of course, are very focused on creating jobs and job opportunities and allowing people through work to fulfil their potential. And we know and there is a wealth of evidence uh, to back this up that work is good for people in the main. So giving people the opportunity to work uh, is good for your health. But of course there are many people with uh, many uh, different conditions who need uh, support to uh, work and to fulfil their potential through work. And uh, information, I think, is very often key to that. Information to employers uh, to know what they have an obligation to do and to know the kind of awareness that they need to have and, in some cases, the kind of support that they need to provide. And when you look across uh, a range of different long-term conditions, there's no doubt that epilepsy is a condition where good information is absolutely vital, it, it's essential. I don't need to tell any of you this, it's a complex condition, it's also a condition that gives rise to a lot of misconceptions and they are misconceptions that need <coughs> to be challenged and challenged in an ongoing way. Uh, so Epilepsy Scotland has undoubtedly led the way for many years now in combating those kinds of uh, misperceptions and sometimes misrepresentations and the work that they've done around this I think has been particularly important and particularly impressive in the workplace. So I want to acknowledge uh, that work and the, the contribution that Epilepsy Scotland have made. That said though, uh, we can see from uh, some fairly recent uh, experimental research that we still have, notwithstanding all of those efforts, significant epilepsy-related stigma that persists amongst employers. Uh, so that tells us that for all the good work that has been done, there is still a considerable amount of work uh, that needs to be done. And we also now live in uh, an era of the Equality Act, which puts particular uh, challenges uh, and obligations onto employers. And I know Epilepsy Scotland uh, rightly was very alert to the challenges that employers would face uh, once the Equality Act came into force last October. Uh, it's likely to lead to a higher number of uh, referrals to occupational health uh, and pointed to the importance of uh, employers having readily accessible and up-to-date information about epilepsy issues. So I think everybody who has been involved, and I know uh, the work and the effort over a, often a long period of time that goes into the production of documents like this one, everybody really is to be congratulated on the result. What we now have in Scotland, uh, thanks to Epilepsy Scotland, is a resource. Uh, it puts Scotland in 
quite an enviable position because as far as I'm aware, we're the only country that has that kind of resource. Um, I'm not saying this to get any plaudits or thanks, but I was very pleased that the Scottish Government was able to provide a small amount of funding uh, to assist with the process. Uh, there's no doubt it will be an invaluable resource to employers, and in being that resource to employers, I hope, and I've got a great deal of confidence, that it will go a long way to continuing to address, challenge and combat those misperceptions and that stigma that we know still exists out there. So let me give a very warm welcome to this. It's unlike, uh, I shouldn't probably say this, but I'm going to anyway, unlike some government strategies that are produced, this is a very practical uh, document. <laughs> it tells employers in a very straightforward and very practical way what they need to know about epilepsy uh, and the workplace. And because of that practical nature, uh, I've got no doubt that it will help to make a big difference and help to ensure that people with epilepsy uh, and those who employ them uh, can provide the support that is needed and those with epilepsy can get the most out of occupational health. Uh, the final point I want to make uh, could be made about a number of conditions, but tonight obviously I'm talking about epilepsy. Epilepsy is simply no longer, it never was, but it is no longer a valid reason for being excluded from or discriminated against in the jobs market. Uh, this guide, uh, this practical document, helps us to move beyond that position and for that reason I warmly welcome it and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to be here tonight to support it. So thank you uh, very much for uh, being here. Thank you for waiting for me. And uh, I hope you not necessarily go and charge your glasses again, but nevertheless, <laughs> enjoy very much the remainder of the evening's hospitality. Thank you very much indeed.